Well, as expected, our garbage government has confirmed a garbage person to replace Ruth Bader Ginsburg on the Supreme Court. And she's a woman. So, you know, we liberals and progressives should be happy. A quick note on that, because um, this baffles me. When Amy Coney Barrett was proposed as the replacement for Ruth Bader Ginsburg, I saw a number of conservatives posting things that literally said things like, she's a woman, isn't that what you wanted? And the complete lack of critical thought is truly astonishing. Conservatives accuse progressives of only caring about identity, identity politics, which we generally do not, or at least should not. Like Joe Biden announced that a whole bunch of women are going to be a part of his administration when he takes over. And for the most part, the response from progressives is, Thanks, I hate them. But conservatives nominate a woman expressly because they're hoping that her gender will somehow blind us so we won't realize how awful she is, uh, doing the exact same thing that the accused progressives of doing and then crying because we aren't falling for it and conforming to the stereotypes that they have assigned to us. It's truly amazing. It would be like if I read a New York Times think piece accusing my dog of hating cheese and then acting shocked when I leave a plate of brie on the floor and disaster strikes. Anyway, the Supreme Court is now a conservative majority and they're already flexing their muscles. There have already been several bad decisions, but today I want to talk about one that will actually result in people dying, or could result in more people dying. The Supreme Court has ruled that the state of New York cannot tell houses of worship to limit their services while a pandemic is tearing across the country. So first of all, this ruling does not immediately affect anyone it's supposedly about. The church and the synagogue that brought this case to the Supreme Court are no longer under any restrictions because those restrictions were lifted once the number of cases in those areas dropped. And of course, the number of COVID-19 cases dropped because of the limitations placed on gatherings like what you see in houses of worship. Now, things are not looking so great for the near future. So as officials in New York and across the country attempt to enact science-based recommendations to limit the spread of the pandemic, they're going to look at this lawsuit and wonder, are we actually allowed to do this? The reason that the conservative Supreme Court justices all voted this way was, according to their written majority opinion, that houses of worship were singled out for particularly harsh restrictions while other businesses like bike shops and acupuncture clinics were considered essential and allowed to remain open to however many customers they wanted. Another brief side note, are churches admitting that they're just like businesses now, like bike shops and acupuncture clinics? Because if so, should they maybe start paying taxes like those companies do? Makes you think. Anyway, uh, the court has determined that religious institutions were unfairly discriminated against. But is that true? Uh, You can't really compare a church to a bike shop. No one goes inside of a bike shop to hang out for more than an hour Uh, or with more than dozens or hundreds of other people, all of whom are speaking and or singing at each other. That is what matters here. Uh, Not whether or not a church is essential. Even if you consider that a business is essential, you still need to adjust it so that you will limit the spread of the pandemic in that place. The American Medical Association told the court straight up that the virus spreads most easily in places that are inside with poor air circulation, with a large number of people staying for an extended period of time that are singing or shouting or speaking to one another. As I mentioned two weeks ago in a study that showed that religious services are one of the worst super spreaders for COVID-19, literally All of those things describe what a church is, and only one or two of those describe what a bike shop is, which, if you're curious, uh, bike shops are an essential business because they are the primary mode of transportation for many people, especially those people who are in cities that have now limited public transportation to shut down the pandemic. 
Um, because public transportation is another essential service that is unfortunately uh, a place where it's quite easy to spread disease. A doctor's office is another essential business that it can include many of those problematic aspects, which is why most medical establishments, if not all medical establishments now, have changed the way that they operate in order to try to keep people safe. My doctor's office, for instance, set up their flu clinic outside. Uh, they took reservations to limit the total number of people who could be there at one time. They required everyone to wear masks at all times. And they marked off the sidewalk so that everybody would stay at least six feet apart. Because that's what you do when you care about your customers or your patients or your parishioners and don't want them to catch or spread a deadly disease. You change the way you operate. You don't sue everyone in order to continue operating in the same way you always have. You could also compare churches to schools, which New York didn't just restrict, but fully closed for complete 100% at-home instruction at the end of August. The only thing that churches could complain about is that that order only applied to public schools. Uh, New York allowed private schools to continue to host in-person classes without restriction. Of course, the answer to this isn't to then also allow churches to operate without restriction. The answer is to also shut down the private schools. We should follow the science in all of these situations, and it's frankly ridiculous and irresponsible that private schools have been allowed to do as they please. Like, I accept that the data is still uncertain about how easily children can spread disease uh, and how well that disease spreads inside schools that take precautionary measures, though new evidence does suggest that an absolute shit ton of children are infected with this pandemic uh, and don't even know it. But if it's good for public schools, it's good for private schools. They should have been treated equally. So yeah, the case with private schools is really the only one I can imagine where a church could argue that they were being discriminated against. But regardless, this Supreme Court decision does not stop the government from discriminating against churches. It actually does sort of the opposite, forcing the government to give churches rights that other businesses, except private schools, don't have. The right to spread a pandemic in the way that scientists overwhelmingly understand that the virus spreads most easily. Asking churches to adjust the way they worship, like limiting the number of people who can be in attendance by social distancing, by not letting people sing COVID into the mouths of other people's faces for hours at a time, you know, whatever, that is not discrimination. Uh, in fact, lawyer Max Kennerly points out on Twitter that the United States has a long history of not allowing religious institutions to practice their religion when it violates the social contract. He cites Roberts in an opinion joined by Thomas, Kennedy, Alito, and Gorsuch, who writes that they ruled Native Americans can't ingest peyote for religious purposes as it violates Oregon's drug laws, among many other similar decisions. Hell, you know, Mormons can't marry more than one person, which is why the fundamentalist Latter-day Saints broke off from the main branch. The majority of Mormons simply changed the way that they practiced their religion in order to conform to the laws of the United States. Your First Amendment right to practice your religion isn't a free pass to just do whatever the hell you want. If it was, living in the United States would be like living the purge every day. Although, I mean, we're, we're kind of close to that anyway, but it would be really bad. I'm going to end this by speaking personally as a Christian. I mean, a cultural Christian and a former God bother. I'm an atheist now, but I grew up as a Baptist, and I was really into it. I remember when I was a kid, um, at one point our church got a new pastor, and there was some disagreement with the pastor's teaching that that forced the congregation to split into two. And half of us picked up and we left that building. And we went to the Seventh-day Adventist church um, because Seventh-day Adventists worship on Saturdays. So they let us have the building on Sundays. It was quite a nice, mutually beneficial relationship. 
And I remember our new pastor saying that a church is not a building. It's got nothing to do with what building you're in. A church is a people. It doesn't matter where you are or even if you're all in the same place together. If you're a Christian or you grew up in a Christian culture, you're probably familiar with the Lord's Prayer. That's the one that starts, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. That comes from Matthew chapter 6, um, in which Christians are explicitly told exactly how the Lord expects them to pray. And in the verse preceding the Lord's Prayer, uh, they are told, And when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by men. I tell you the truth, they have received their reward in full. But when you pray, go into your room, close the door and pray to your father who is unseen. Then your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. Like all religions, Christianity and Judaism have some good stuff in there. Uh, but unfortunately, like all religions, their adherents, a large number of their adherents, don't really pay attention to the good stuff. So we end up with a church like the Agudath Synagogue uh, with a total revenue of about $12 million and the Catholic Diocese of Brooklyn, which has about $40 million in assets, but sadly does need to pay out about $17 million per year to the victims who have been sexually abused by their priests. But we have these two large houses of worship who have decided to sue to keep their buildings open during a pandemic, rather than let their adherents go into their rooms, close their doors, and pray to their father, who is unseen. I tell you the truth, they have received their reward in full.